What up fam, in today's video I'm going to talk about my time putting 700 miles in the Nike Zoom X Invincible. I'm going to talk about my time and experience during those 700 miles, why I think the shoe is designed the way it is, hint it's probably designed the way it is in favor of its midsole, and I'm also going to talk about and break it down in detail the upper, the midsole, the outsole, and anything in between. So guys, stay tuned. the midsole, the height of the shoe, the block of Zoom X that this shoe uses. Now I only use this shoe during the 700 mile time just for easy runs and strides. There are several things that I've noticed about the midsole. In my opinion, there is a break-in period for Zoom X or p type foam shoes, but this shoe in particular, because of its wide base and the fact that it is a block of Zoom X foam for the midsole, it did feel like to me it was bottoming out. Bottoming out in the sense of like this. As if you could feel your foot sinking over time the outsole of the shoe or the outer sides of the midsole of the shoe while your foot's in it rise up. But that didn't really happen until around 400 miles. Now the shoe is bouncy, it is responsive, it's fun to ride, especially if you haven't run in a shoe that has a lot of foam on the bottom. Now all shoes have a diminishing return when it comes to its bounce or its responsiveness. We all know that. The Invincible felt to me that it exponentially lost its responsiveness a lot quicker than say for example the Nike React and Free Run 1, version 1. Strides aren't really that great in them. It's great for getting those easy miles, great on your legs, especially if you've done like a workout, you know, the day before and stuff like that and you're trying to recover. What I think could prevent bottoming them out of the shoe over time is if Nike were to put a different type of polymer within the shoe, make the shoe narrower, but they can't really do that because of the fact that they're using a block of Zoom X that would make it too unstable. So they can either put some medium, whether it be a, a Zoom unit or some type of foam like React Foam e EVA or TPU within the midsole of the shoe or sporadically throughout the midsole of the shoe would definitely make the Invincible more durable. It probably would take away from its bounce, but it's not really meant to be a bouncy, it's an easy day shoe. Now the only shoe that I know that Nike has done that has had a polymer or a mixture or a placement of Zoom X and React is the Nike Pegasus Turbo. Now because of this shoe, it is responsive, but it is unstable in my opinion. When you run in it, it kind of feels like you're running on a waterbed or like if you're sitting in a car and someone slams on the brakes and you're the passenger, the car stops, but you keep moving, especially when running downhill in the early stages when the shoe is brand new, fresh out of the box, you will notice that it's a little unstable. The design in the midsole, if you notice, is a little bit thicker on the back end and it's slightly slanted on the back end. Because of that, the foot is probably going to favor excessive dorsiflexion to be able to get your foot through the gait cycle within this shoe and to to achieve that dorsiflexion, the foot would actually evert out a little bit more or go outward. So if you fam at home know anyone that has a pair of Invincibles, run behind them and you'll notice that the foot or their foot will pan outwards when they run uh, to compensate for the mechanics of the midsole. Any shoe you wear will alter your gait very subtly. So obviously you may be able to see this a little bit more. The more reinforcement there is in a shoe, probably the more subtle notice of an alteration in gait. Believe it or not, the brain actually has a decrease in sensory perception when your foot is in a shoe. So in reality, you're probably not knowing if you're doing more harm than good to yourself by wearing a shoe that takes away a lot of the sensory that your foot was made to do for. But that is a topic for another video. Now, if you notice in the back of the heel, it's slightly slanted, like I said earlier, and it also has like a grip or heel cup. And like I said at the beginning of this video, this shoe is made probably with the midsole completely in line for every structure of the shoe. The back heel cup is there to keep the heel from everting. Everything is about rear foot eversion when it comes to excessive pronation. Again, a topic for another video. The heel cup is there to compensate probably for the instability from the Zoom X phone, a trade off for responsiveness, and it's holding the foot there or the calcaneus or the heel there to keep it from everting so that you can probably get through the shoe a little bit more. As a matter of fact, you could probably look at the newer footage of the version two out there. They still got the heel cup. They didn't really change the midsole. Uh, it's probably there to stop excessive rear foot eversion to affect mechanics. Now for the aesthetics of the shoe after 700 miles, there's definitely some crinkling, some dirt up in there. The inside of the Zoom X, maybe they should have put more outsole on the bottom of the shoe to protect that Zoom X a little bit more. Um, it's a little worn down, but to me it feels like it bottomed out a little bit, like I said, around 400 miles. 
and that is the midsole. Let's go to the outsole. So like I said, like a broken record, the structure of the shoe is designed in favor for the ride of the shoe to help the ride be more efficient. Now the outsole is there. Guys, friction, right? Surface area, if you look at the bottom of the shoe, there are a bunch of lugs. Notice the lugs increase as they go inward. That is probably because of the back of the shoe, there's a slight slant, probably favor early supination. Going into pronation, the foot's gonna torque inward a little bit more. So to slow down that torque, you add more friction. And how to add more friction, you add more surface area. As far as ride of the outsole, wasn't slippery in wet conditions, which is great. The bottom of the shoe wore down pretty quickly. The out back lateral portion of the shoe right here, it wore down probably after three runs, which I was kind of disappointed about. But for the thickness of the outsole, even after 700 miles and with my gait pattern, it still hasn't worn through the outsole and hitting the Zoom X, which is great. There's only so much you can add to a bottom of a shoe, especially of this caliber with the amount of thickness it has. So they probably didn't really have an option to add heavier lugs or thicker lugs like a Pegasus, for example, because of the fact that there's so much foam they're working with. Now to the upper. Now the upper is not as breathable in my opinion. It seems to get every piece of sand and dirt stuck in its fibers. The upper stayed tight throughout all its life, which is great. But I've heard that people have complained of pinky toe blisters. Comment down below if you've ever had a pinky toe blister from the shoe. And I don't think personally, unless they change the midsole of the shoe, they're gonna fix the upper in any certain way, which will probably come for the third iteration. They need that tack down because of, like I said earlier, the increase in rear foot eversion. The, believe it or not, the tighter you have on the top of the shoe, the less of a probability or less torque that goes on into the back of the heel. And that's why if you look at cross patterns with like lacing techniques or Arthur Lydiard ladder lacing techniques, believe it or not, both type of ways actually do a good job of tacking down the foot but as you run more and more the shoe tends to loosen up a little bit hence why laces come loose and stuff like that which would definitely affect foot mechanics later on within the run now if they want to change the upper they probably can change the lacing system maybe put some type of fly wire i believe they're bringing that back like in the i think in the react threes there is feathering and tethering of the upper much like velcro on cloth this shoe looks like it literally had a bunch of velcro stuck up against it now the thing i don't like is with the placement of the swoosh the laminated swoosh on the side i believe is not necessary obviously it's probably for um, aesthetics but over time the lamination of the swoosh actually seems to cut into the upper and bend where it is so i believe that placement of the swoosh should probably be maybe on top of the foot kind of like the lunar spiders back in the day or shoes back in the day where they had or the early vapor flies laminate that way but where it's placed does affect how the shoe feels when it bends it does poke out a little bit i didn't find it annoying at all but i did feel like that over time it would have caused a hole to form within the shoe which is a big no-no as for the rest of the upper notice that this shoe also has heavy heel padding around the heel on the top of the shoe like i said it's probably to slow down rear foot eversion given for the instability of the amount of zoom x foam you're working with but i believe there's also another mechanic to it is that if you ever like hit your inner heel with your opposite foot, right? There are three things that can cause that. Lack of dorsiflexion in the big toe, lack of dorsiflexion in the ankle, and lack of eccentric pull when it comes to the hip flexor on the side that's going into the, uh, the opposite foot. So if you were to not be able to load your big toe a lot, better given that the shoe's pretty unstable your body's gonna probably your foot's gonna probably want to go through that gait cycle as quick as possible to keep moving there's a higher probability that you may wick and hit the inner side of the shoe so i believe that not only is this heel cup pattern at the top like a skateboard shoe there to keep the foot or heel intact it's also there to protect the heel from the outside foot the other foot from immediately hitting the inner ankle. Now the lacing system felt fine. It did feel like it loosened up over time. Definitely over time, both within a run and over time over the course of 700 miles, doesn't tack on as great, but still does its job. Definitely could see a change in lacing system in the future. Things that Nike I think could do to change the shoe to make it better than it already is, is to possibly make the shoe a little bit more narrow. If they do do that, they may have to change the polymer within the midsole because if they go too narrow with Zoom X or Piba, it may be a little too unstable. 
They could keep it the way it is and add some polymer or zoom unit within the midsole to keep the shoe from bottoming them out, make it more durable, may take away some responsiveness, but it's supposed to be an easy day shoe, so you don't really need responsiveness in my opinion. For the upper, they could probably make it a little bit more breathable, fix the lacing system so it doesn't tack so hard on your foot, fix the heel cup system in the back. If they change the midsole, then they could probably change the upper and the back of the shoe with it to make it a more favorable ride. Overall, it's a great shoe. I had some issues personally with Achilles and maybe a little bit of posterior tibial tendonitis because of the instability, but give the body time to adapt to the shoe. Don't wear it every day. And obviously do your strengthening exercises and stuff like that. Then you should probably enjoy the shoe a lot more. All right, fam, if you like this video, watch this video next. That is my time running 700 miles in the Nike Zoom X Invincible. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for when I post my next video. Love you guys. Catch you guys next time. Peace.